Hey guys, in this video, now, if you know what all these terms mean, or you simply don't care, then this video is not for you. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about video modes, namely progressive and interlaced, as well as something that I think every filmmaker should know, which is pixel aspect ratio. Ever noticed the P in 1080p and wonder what it meant? No, it does not stand for pixels, it actually stands for progressive. Sometimes you can also see an I there, as in 1080i or 720i. The I stands for interlaced. In case you're going to zone out on me after this next sentence, just remember that progressive video is a lot better quality than interlaced and should always be preferred. Uh, now, with that out of the way, let's have a look at the actual difference between progressive and interlaced video. As you know, video is displayed and recorded as a grid of pixels. Here's a grid. In order to show animation, the color of these pixels has to be updated every frame. However, progressive and interlaced video differ in the way they update these pixels. In a progressive video mode, every pixel in the image is updated with every new frame. This leads to a very smooth and seamless animation. Interlaced video mode, however, only updates every alternating row of pixels with each new frame. This can lead to a lot of ugly artifacts, especially if you have moving objects in the frame. Here's some footage I've recorded using a camcorder with an interlaced video mode. If you look closely at the footage, especially my arm, you can clearly see the artifacts caused by the interlaced video. These jagged edges are due to the fact that interlaced video only ever updates all the odd rows or all the even rows of pixels in the image. Therefore, half the pixels in your image will always be one frame behind in time. I hope this clarifies the difference between progressive and interlaced video. Always remember to check whether the camera you're buying or the display device does actually support a progressive video mode because the quality is going to be that much better. Fortunately, interlaced video modes are slowly becoming obsolete. When people think of a pixel, they usually picture this little guy right here. However, in the confusing world of video cameras, film formats, TV broadcasting standards, pixels are not always square. Sometimes they're more wide than they are tall. The relationship between the width and the height of a pixel is referred to as the pixel aspect ratio and is usually expressed as a decimal number. In our case here, our little friend is 1.333 times wider than it is tall. Now, the reason this is important is that if your footage appears stretched or squashed, it is usually because you're displaying the footage at a different pixel aspect ratio to the pixel aspect ratio you recorded the footage at. As an example, assume you just got a new camcorder and you're planning on uploading your videos to YouTube. Now, YouTube currently supports a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1080 However, a lot of camcorders just don't record at that full resolution. They often use a format called HDV, which, well, it comes at many different resolutions, but a very common one is 1440 by 1080 However, it does not use square pixels. It actually uses the pixel aspect ratio of 1.333, meaning your pixels are 1.333 times wider than they are tall. The problem can now come in when you load the footage from your camcorder into your video editing software. If for whatever reason the video editing software assumes that your footage was shot at square pixels, when you then try to use your footage, it will appear squashed and you will get ugly black bars on the outside. The solution to this is to make sure that your video editing software recognizes that the footage from your camcorder actually uses a pixel aspect ratio of 1.333 and therefore when you use the footage it will expand and the black ugly bars on the outside will disappear. Interestingly enough, if you do the calculations 1440 by 1080 at a 1.333 pixel aspect ratio will expand to fit exactly 1920 by 1080. Now let me quickly jump into my video editing software and show you what I mean. Here we are in Adobe Premiere and again this applies to any video editing software tool you may be using. I have a little clip recorded and if I drag this into my sequence we can immediately see something's not quite right. The footage appears very squished together and we've got black bars on either side. Looking at the properties for the clip we can see that it was shot at 1440 by 1080 and Adobe Premiere claims it was a pixel aspect ratio of 1.0 which means square pixels. However, this is incorrect. The pixel aspect ratio for this footage is actually 1.333. The way we can rectify this is we can right click on the clip, go to modify, interpret footage 
And this will give us a pop-up box where we can tell Adobe Premiere explicitly how to treat this footage. Currently, if you have a look, it's set to be square pixels. And yes, I know I've managed to change this before so I could show you this problem. If we change this to the correct pixel aspect ratio of 1.333 and hit OK, we can immediately see our footage expands, fills the frame and the stretching and squishing distortion is gone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and as always leave any comments or feedback you may have in the section below. And remember, if your footage appears stretched or squashed either while you're working on it or after export, ensure that your pixel aspect ratio matches the pixel aspect ratio of whatever camera you're using to record your footage. Also remember, Intel is bad, progressive good. Until next time, I will see you later.